Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter well we're going to go back and take another look at the Minitab software and this time so we're going to do a Minitab tutorial so it's Minitab software and we're going to cover something that I covered just a few days ago uh, when I was talking about my other software DOE Pro and we are going to talk about analyzing a multi response DOE so we're going to take a look how Minitab how Minitab deals with this this is not my this is not my uh, software of choice so it wasn't something I was familiar with but I thought I'd go away find out how Minitab deals with this and then I would just make a video showing you so depending on which software you use do you use DOE Pro do you use Minitab there are other pieces of software I can't I can't test every one but uh, I do have um, I do have access to the Minitab software so I've got to found out for you so I'm going to show you not just how I do the multiple response but actually how I set Minitab up because um, Minitab has a very traditional way of doing design of experiments which I don't always find very helpful so I'm going to show you some little tips and tricks as I set up the the DOE pattern and then I'm just going to show you how it uh, how it hits two targets for you so I'm not going to do too much regression or anything like that we're just going to go in and I'm just going to show you two targets and I'm just going to show you how the computer uh, creates a, a regression analysis for the two uh, outputs and then how the computer will hit the two targets for you so let's go and take a look at the Minitab software so first of all you can see me here look just setting up uh, a straight 2 to the 4 is what I'm going to do I'm going to do a 2 to the 4 full factorial so I'm going to create factorial design and up comes the window one of the things I've got to do of course is drop the little menu down now look and select four factors because I'm doing a two to the four two level full factorial then I've got to go into the designs turn the full factorial on because it doesn't default to that it always defaults to a fractional and then we're going to do the number of replicates or center points now I'm going to leave that at one very important that I leave it at one and the number of center points I'm going to leave at zero and then I'm going to click OK to that. So the, the very fact that I asked for the number of replicates was important. Here's the little window look for saying what the levels are and what the variables are. I'm not going to, I'm not going to use that. And then I've clicked in here into the options and I've turned off randomized runs. So that was very important as well. And then I've clicked OK to that. And there's the pattern set up for you. So just two important things about that. One of the things I, I did was the number of replicates. So this was important. As you saw me do this, I left the number of replicates at one and I unticked. I unticked randomize. So I don't want the computer to randomize. Now what do these two things do? What they'll actually do for me in the software, and you can see it here on the screen, you can see the table, look, it just gives me one block of the DOE pattern. So if this was a, a little two by two by two, factor A, factor B, it just gives me the block of data like that. Now if I if I'd have asked for replicates it would have repeated down the table. We're going to take a look at that in a second in an Excel sheet. So I'll show you how Minitab would have wanted to set the pattern up. Um, it would have replicated that pattern down the table and if I'd have randomized not only would it have replicated the pattern down the table it would have randomized the whole thing which makes the data very difficult to look at and to be practical about so let's carry on and we'll have a look at the rest of the data going into Minitab so I've just set the data up 
I've set the pattern up. Now what of course we're gonna do is we're gonna put the data into that table and the data can go anywhere. So because Minitab, of the, because of the way it works, I can literally paste the data anywhere in the table and you're gonna see me do that and then just set up columns that the software can analyze. So let's go back to Minitab. So here's the first set of response data going in. I've got three replicates and I've just, I've just uh, typed them in anywhere on the table and now I'm going to just scroll across and I can put the second block of data in there and there it is. So there's the two blocks of data, three replicates for each of the runs. Now the reason why I unchecked those marks is so that I could have the data looking like this because what I want to be able to do I want to be able to look across the rows of data because I want to judge that my designed experiment has gone off of, as planned. So look, row one, look, I want to be able to see that the results are similar. That row there, they're all in the 50s. That row there, they're all in the 50s. That row there, they're much lower, but they're all together. I want to be able to see that, and therefore I've left the data as a table. And so that's very important to me. If I hadn't have unchecked those marks, the table would have looked very different, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Now, because I've, I've set the data up like this, one of the things I've got to do now is summarize. So I'm gonna put mean one, and I'm gonna calculate row statistics. So I'm gonna tell it, I'm gonna tell it uh, where the data's collected. I'm gonna tell it where to store the result. Now what I should have done here, I noticed on this that uh, I made a little mistake, but I've done the sum of rather than the, uh, the average. So that should have been average one. And then average two, I do the same thing, row statistics. I have to tell it where the data is. It's in uh, 16, 17 and 18. And then I have to tell it where to store the result in C20 this time. And they're the two columns of data that I'm going to analyze. It should have said average, by the way. It should have said mean, not sum there. But you can see as it's, uh, as it's set that up. So now, of course, what I can do is I can go and, I can go and analyze that. But, but I can look at the data. I can look at the DOE in one big block. But if we take a look at a different pattern, this is how it would have done it had I not have uh, asked for, had I asked for more replicates or had I asked for um, uh, the randomized pattern, if I have asked re for replicates, Minitab would have replicated the design look three times down the page. You can see that in the three colors, the blue, the cream color and the green, it would have replicated three times. And then the responses would be in single columns. And that's the way that Minitab wants to do it. But of course, if I did that, I have no chance, I have no chance to look across the row and make sure everything's okay. So now what we can do, of course, is we can go analyze the factorial design. And I'm gonna do a very simple analysis. I'm obviously gonna do mean one and mean two. I'm gonna put both of those in the box. And then I'm going to go into the terms that I wanted to analyze. Now, because it's only got one column of data, in order to have enough degree to, degrees of freedom to do this, I have to take one of the redundant terms away, and I've taken the ABCD away, because that's redundant, it's unlikely to be important. Um, I don't need to do anything with the options. Um, in the results, I'm gonna turn everything off but the regression equation. So I'm just gonna turn everything down here there we go, and uh, click OK, and then I can click OK to the analysis. And then what I get, of course, is an analysis of mean one, I get an analysis of mean two. And there's the equation for mean two, for example, with a little Pareto of the standardized effects. Now, normally, of course, what you'd be doing is you'd be regressing this model down until all the unnecessary uh, terms are out of mean one 
all the unnecessary terms are out of mean two. Now I'm not showing you that process in this case. What I'm just showing you is how the computer will happily now take two targets off you and you can make these equations home in on those two targets. So you're gonna see me, you're gonna see me do that in a moment now. So here we go, look, DOE, back to factorial and down to response optimizer. So now I, I can choose not to switch this on, but I'm gonna ask it to hit a target for mean two. I'm gonna ask it to hit a target for mean one. Let's have a look, I need to just decide what, what sensible targets to, to put in there. Uh, I think I'm gonna put in uh, 1200 uh, for target one. So 1200 for target one. And uh, I think 32 we go for on target, target two. So I've just asked for two targets that I think the models can hit. But obviously normally you would have uh, he would have two requirements, two tolerances, something like that to hit. Um, and this would obviously be related to some real life uh, challenge, engineering challenge that you're trying to sort out. Uh, in terms of some of the other things, in terms of the setup, I do have the opportunity look, to change the importance. I can do that. Uh, so I can change the importance in the setup or the weight. So I can, if, if it can't hit both targets, I can make it choose one over the other, which is quite important sometimes, especially when you've got multiple targets to hit. I didn't change that in this case. In terms of the options, well, I can constrain the variables. So if there was a cheap zone on the variables, I could uh, hold it as a value, constrain a region, etc. cetera. Um, but again, not gonna change any of that, but there's options there to make the computer work in a certain region. And then in terms of the results, well, I'm gonna take all the results that he comes up with, and then we're gonna click OK to that. And now it comes back, look, with some optimized values. So you can see that it says, yep, I can uh, hit the target, and A goes to minus 0.99, B to one, C to minus one, D to minus one, and if I use those four settings, I will happily, hit the two targets that I've just asked for. So I asked for, uh, I asked for 1232 and you can see, look, mean two, mean one, what will I hit? I'll hit exactly those targets with exactly those settings. And that pretty much is how Minitab optimizes using multiple outputs. Well, I hope you found that useful. So that was just the optimization function. Now, of course, I, I could have I could have put more data in there. So you can, if you set the thing up as the columns. So if you do it as the full columns, uh, rather than the way I do it as a table, I prefer it to be a table because I want to I want to visualize the data. I want to see what's going on. But um, if what you've done is you'd collected, you know, response one, you put it in the in the, the mini tab table, response two, put it in the mini tab table, you could have done response three, you could have done response four. So not a problem. Obviously when you go in and you do the regression, you've got to tell it that there's four columns of data to analyze, but it will happily create four models for you. And then when you go into the optimizer, it will show you those four models and it'll say, do you want to optimize them or not? You have a choice to go target, maximize or minimize. And you ask it to hit the targets that you're interested in for the engineering challenge that you're taking on. And then Minitab will attempt to hit all the targets. As I said, in, in one of those windows as well, you do get the option to restrict the design space. So one of the things that you can do, if you have one of your variables, let's say variable A was pressure, and the, the design space was 100, 200, and 200 is a very expensive, is a very expensive place to be. Of course, one of the options that you had there was to constrain the region. So what you could have done was said, well, 
maybe I just want you to play in the cheap zone so please please find an answer in the 100 to 150 region and the computer can try and do that you can try and hit these four targets by playing in the cheap region so there's all sorts of techniques that you need to learn when you're used you're, you're trying to learn how to use these optimizers don't just let the computer just ha have its um, you know, have its own choice. The computer is stupid. It doesn't know that this is expensive. So have a little play around with Minitab. Have a little play around with your optimizer and see how to make it pick the cheapest and the best solution. But if you wanna hit multiple targets using the response optimizer in Minitab, that is how it's done.